Welcome to the Cardiac Emma Learner Series, a unique video tutorial program under the aegis of Indian Association of Cardiac Imaging. This program is focused on beginners and intermediate images with learning happening through short sessions and case-based discussions. We are grateful to experts from different parts of India who have helped us in putting this program together. Please do feel free to give us your feedback so we can continually improve such training opportunities. Today's presentation is by Dr. Major Vimal Raj, who is the Head of Radiology and a Consultant Cardiothoracic Radiologist in Narayana Institute of Cardiac Sciences, Bangalore. He is an expert in adult and congenital cardiac CT and MR imaging and also has special interest in interstitial lung disease and pulmonary hypertension imaging. He has published more than 75 articles in peer-reviewed journals and has textbooks on FRCR and HRCT under his belt. He also holds a patent in post-mortem CT coronary angiography catheter design and has been awarded a medal by the NATO for his operational service in Afghanistan. He is a convener of Cardiothoracic Imaging Fellowship in NH Bangalore. In this session, we deal with the viability assessment with cardiac MRI. The objectives are understand what is viability and why is it important to determine viability in assessing patients with coronary artery disease. How can we assess viability in cardiac MRI and also to compare cardiac MRI with other methods in assessing viability? Classical definition of viability says that a viable myocardium is one which will improve its contractile function or in which remodeling can be avoided once blood flow has been restored. In simple terms, viable myocardium is alive and if the blood supply is restored, it will work better than what it is currently doing. On the other hand, non-viable myocardium means a myocardium which is dead and improving its blood supply will have no effect in improving its function. Now, if we were to look a bit deeper into the assessment of viability, every myocardium we look at based on its function, how is the myocardium working, what is its blood flow, and what is the chance of recovery of that myocardium. A normal myocardium will have normal function, the blood flow will be normal to it and of course there is no reason for it to recover so chance of recovery is also normal in that case. Hibernating myocardium is a part of the myocardium which has got reduced blood supply leading to reduced function and if we improve the blood supply its chance of recovery is good. So this is what we would call as a viable myocardium. Similarly, there is another scenario where the myocardium may be stunned, whereby there was a temporary reduction in the blood flow to that myocardium, which has become normal now, as seen in coronary artery spasm, which spontaneously improves. The function is reduced in these myocardial segments, and they may be having reduced function for a period of time as long as six months. The recovery of these myocardial segments is also expected to happen. Non-viable myocardium, on the other hand, is a segment of the myocardium which has got poor function and poor blood flow and is unlikely to recover even if the blood flow is improved. Is viability important? Well, there was very good evidence to support the fact that myocardial segments, which are viable, improve very well with revascularization. The segments which were non-viable, if you were to operate or revascularize these segments, the patients were expected to do poorly, as is shown in this uh, image here, whereby 
the mortality rate is much higher if the viable segments get medical treatment rather than revascularization. And lowest mortality was seen in patients who had revascularization. However, the concept of viability was questioned by some major trials such as HEART, PAR2 and STITCH trial which basically looked at revascularization in comparison with optimal medical therapy in patients with coronary artery disease. The sub-studies of these trials also looked at the role of viability assessment and PET or SPECT were the tests which were used for assessment of viability. The results of these studies suggested that whether the management was guided by viability assessment or not, there was no significant difference in the patient outcome suggesting that there is no role of viability testing in patients with coronary artery disease. These trials were dissected apart and people looked well into the subgroups to assess the reason for such a finding. However, in my eyes, the test which was used to assess for viability in these studies was wrong. SPECT and PET was the most common modality used for imaging rather than cardiac MRI. So, viability assessment is important. Segments which are viable needs to be revascularized and segments which are non-viable needs to undergo optimal medical therapy. How do we do viability assessment with cardiac MR? One is to look at the wall thickness in end diastole. Two is to look at the wall motion of each segment. Three is by using low-dose dobutamine. And four is by using delayed enhancement technique. The standard cardiac MR protocol for viability includes localizer images, cine images in all standard planes. Use of edema imaging is very important to differentiate acute areas of infarct from chronic infarcts. Early gadolinium enhancement images help in determining areas of microvascular obstruction and thrombus. Also, T1 and T2 mapping is performed in these patients. Finally, at the end, you do delayed enhancement images in short axis, two chamber and four chamber plates. When we look at end diastolic wall thickness, if the end diastolic wall thickness is 6 mm, the segment is most likely viable. This is a sensitive technique but not very specific. Now you can see the same thing across here. When you look at wall thickness in end diastolic uh, image, and what you will see is there is thinning of the wall which is likely to be non-viable. Also, it is important to look at the wall motion abnormality. So if you look at this image across here, you are looking at this segment of the myocardium which is thinned out and akinetic in motion. So we look at all the segments, we comment about whether there is hypokinesis, normal wall motion or severe hypokinesis to akinesis. Akinetic segments are likely to be non-viable. Low-dose dobutamine is used in uh, cases where there is acute presentation or if delayed enhancement is not conclusive. In low-dose dobutamine, we would do the standard techniques. We start dobutamine infusion at 5 to 10 microgram per kilogram per minute for 3 minutes. And then we start doing short axis three images at basal, mid, and apical cavity, two chamber, and four chamber while the dobutamine infusion continues. What you can see in this image is an area of hypokinesis in the inferior segments at rest. And once we give low dose dobutamine, you can see the same segment has improved its contractility, which confirms that this is a viable segment. There is no need for giving gadolinium because 
we can look at the wall motion improvement and do not need to look at the size of the infarction. Delayed enhancement imaging is essentially imaging performed 5 to 10 minutes after giving the contrast and we are looking at the accumulation of gadolinium in the extracellular space. PSIR images or single shot images are used to look at these after deciding the appropriate nulling time. Good evidence came out early in the century which basically said that segments which had more than 50% of infarction, so you can look at these areas which had more than 50% of murality of infarction, these patients did not improve in contractility with revascularization. This basically led to looking at the murality of the infarct, whether it is up to 25%, 25 to 50%, 50 to 75% or more than 75%. Now, anything which was more than 50% is uh, thought to be non-viable. But over the period of years, what we have realized is that the spatial resolution of MRI has significantly improved. And in our practice, anything which has more than 75% of infarction is called non-viable and anything less than 50% is called viable. The in-between ones where there is 50 to 75% of murality of infarction, we look at the wall motion. If there is hypokinesis, then we call these as viable hibernating segments. If there is akinesis, then we call these as non-viable segments. So you can look at the different examples where we are seeing less than 50% of infarction, while there are areas of 50 to 75% of infarction, and then there are areas of near transmural infarction. When we look at the sensitivity and specificity of uh, different cardiac MR techniques, what we will see is that the low dose dobutamine stress has high specificity, while end diastolic wall thickness is highly sensitive and late gadolinium enhancement does well with both sensitivity and specificity. In real life practice, we do not use any of these parameters in isolation. We take the wall motion abnormality, we look at the thickening of the wall, and we look at the LGE enhancement all put together before we make a decision with regards to viability. It is important to describe each segment and its viability. So it's important that everyone is aware of the 17 segment model. And when we report our findings, we report it based on the 17 segment model. So we've looked at viability. Why is it important? We've also looked at how to assess it in cardiac MR. Now let's try and compare it with other methods. When we look at cardiac MR, it's important to know that cardiac MR not only gives us the viability data, but it also gives us a lot of other important clinical parameters such as end diastolic volume, the LV systolic function, and poor prognostic features such as microvascular obstruction, and features of valvular dysfunction can also be seen. It's also good when we are trying to plan for LV aneurysm repair or left ventricular reconstruction surgeries, which other modalities are not very good at providing us with the information. Let's look at this one case where patient gets sent to us for assessment of viability. And what we can clearly see in this patient is that the apical segments have got an infarct and within the infarct, there is a thrombus sitting at the LV apex, which other nuclear medicine modalities are unlikely to pick up on. This is another patient who had a large LAD territory infarct with LV dysfunction and was sent to us for surgical planning in terms of DORS procedure. And we can see here clearly the degree of transmural infarction, which can 
help in surgeon planning the ventricular reconstruction and improving the functional status of the patient. This is another patient who has got a large aneurysm coming from the inferior wall. You can see it's very easy to delineate the borders of the viable tissue from the non-viable tissue and also be able to plan for the surgery so that there are no surprises when the surgeon is in the thoracic cavity. This patient came into the emergency department with acute chest pain, young female patient, and on MR, what we are looking at are areas of hypokinesis along the anterior segment. There is mild pericardial effusion also seen in this. And when we do edema imaging, this is clearly showing us area of inflammation in a large anterior wall while the inferior wall seems to be normal. Delayed enhancement imaging demonstrated diffuse transmural enhancement of the anterior wall suggestive of a large non-viable territory of infarction. But it is very important to understand here that in scenarios of acute myocardial infarction, the degree of edema will lead to overcalling of the transmurality of the infarction and hence in these scenarios it is useful to add low dose dobutamine to the viability assessment protocol. This is a different patient who came in with uh, severe chest pain, echo demonstrated a pericardial effusion and wall motion abnormality along the inferior segments. An angiography was done which showed RCA severe disease and an MRI was suggested for assessment of viability. On delayed enhancement imaging, what we can see in this patient is this large area of infarct in the RCA territory with these black areas in between, which are areas of microvascular obstruction in keeping with no reflow phenomenon. These areas are of poor prognosis and can lead to ventricular arrhythmias in these patients. If you compare cardiac MR with other modalities such as PET-CT or SPECT-CT, small subendocardial infarcts are often missed with nuclear medicine studies. This was a animal model study which basically demonstrated that small subendocardial infarcts which can be seen in MRI and histopathology are often missed out in SPECT imaging. On a meta-analysis for the assessment of viability, delayed enhancement MRI had a very high sensitivity and negative predictive value. The butamine stress MR was uh, very, very good in both its sensitivity and specificity. So, the take-home message are Viability testing is extremely important in today's practice and helps in guiding correct clinical decision with regards to revascularization or optimal medical therapy. Cardiac MRI is a comprehensive one-stop test which gives us all the information required to take the right decisions in management of patients wall motion abnormalities and delayed enhancement are the techniques used for assessing viabilities. There is no comparison of MRI with SPECT with MRI being far superior for assessment of viability. Microvascular obstructions, LV volumes, LV systolic function are important prognostic features which would be helpful in improving patient care. Thank you very much for your patient listening. If you do have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us.